This week in AI wasn't about one launch or one model. It was about direction. Who is making the biggest bets? Where power is shifting? Where resistance is building? And where reality is starting to push back? Here are the top nine things that happened in AI this week. Let's get started. At number one, we've got Elon Musk on the Moonshots interview talking about singularity and AGI. He set the tone for the week with a series of statements that explain why the AI industry feels so extreme right now. He said, we are already living through the singularity. We're in the singularity. What? What is singularity? The singularity is the point where artificial intelligence becomes smarter than humans and begins improving itself so fast that the future can no longer be predicted or controlled by people. That's the singularity. There is no on off switch. That progress in AI is non-linear and accelerating. The next big thing he said was that anything that involves information and anything short of shaping atoms, um, AI can do probably half or more of those jobs right now. The next big thing he said was that AGI could arrive as early as next year. Like I'm confident by 2030, um, AI will exceed the intelligence of all humans combined. And by the way, no need to save for retirement in another 10 to 20 years because there will be abundance in the world. These weren't product announcements. They were a world view and they frame everything that follows. At number two, we've got OpenAI and its big bet on health. Health is one of the biggest frontiers for AI. Over 230 million people globally ask health and wellness questions on ChatGPT every single week. That's roughly 30% of ChatGPT's weekly users. I know I've done it, you probably have too, and it was pretty good. So this is a huge opportunity that everyone in AI is eyeing. And this week, OpenAI rolled out a dedicated health tab inside ChatGPT. Don't see it yet? Don't worry, it's coming soon. This health experience has been created in collaboration with doctors and medical experts and is designed specifically for health-related use case. You can upload your medical records, you can connect to data from Apple Health, MyFitnessPal and many other fitness and wellness apps. Given the sensitivity of health data, OpenAI has also added health-specific privacy and security protections, including purpose-built encryption, isolation of health conversations, and compartmentalization, so health data remains separate from other chats. Now the question is whether ChatGPT is ready to be your doctor. No, not yet. There are the usual disclaimers. This is to help you understand your health, not to replace your medical professional. At number three, as OpenAI pushes into health, Jensen Wong moved into the open source frontier model space. NVIDIA is a frontier AI model builder, and we build it in a very special way. We build it completely in the open. It's why the market is huge. Open models are only six months behind Frontier Labs in terms of capability, and they are being downloaded by corporates all across the world. As Jensen says, when AI is open, it proliferates everywhere. The next thing is physical AI. And if we were ever going to understand how to navigate ourselves and how to guide the industry towards this new future, we have to get good at building the entire stack that the first AV car from NVIDIA is going to be on the road in Q1. NVIDIA this week launched its own model, a frontier open source AI model designed specifically for autonomous systems, which includes self-driving vehicles and robots. The model is built for reasoning and planning in real world environments rather than general chat. 
He also pointed to a new architecture for physical AI, which is built around training with synthetic data, edge inference, and simulations. The logic is straightforward. As physical AI scales, GPU demand will scale with it. At number four, you've got Google, which is bringing Gemini into Gmail because Google could not sit still. Email is one of the biggest use cases for AI. About 14% of ChatGPT usage is just for that because no one wants to write, hope you are well. And Google could see the risk. So Google expanded the reach of its AI by integrating Gemini into Gmail. This embeds AI into one of the world's most widely used work tools, making AI assistance part of everyday email workflows. And at number five, you've got US and China. The tension and the race deepens. This, this week highlighted how deeply AI and geopolitics are intertwined. China is rumored to be preparing to approve imports of NVIDIA's H200 chips as early as the first quarter of 2026. The H200 is an older generation AI chip that the US government has allowed for export. China plans to bar these chips from use in military, sensitive government agencies, critical infrastructure, and state-owned enterprises. But this is still a big win for Jensen, Wong, and NVIDIA. At the same time, Meta's acquisition of AI startup Manus is facing scrutiny from Chinese regulators. The review is ongoing and remains at a very early stage. We'll keep you posted. At number six, this was Backlash Week. This week showed that AI scales, pushback is accelerating legally, socially, and commercially. Character AI and Google both agreed to settle lawsuits that were brought by families of teenagers who self-harmed or died by suicide after prolonged chatbot interactions. These settlements show the ramifications if companies don't put up guardrails. Yet despite enforcement pledges, XAI's crop continues to be misused to generate sexually degrading images, including those of women and children. These are circulating widely on X. Even after complaints, the problem persists. And then there was Amazon, which faced backlash from retailers who alleged that their product data was scraped and surfaced by AI shopping tools without their explicit consent. AI challenges are no longer technical. They're legal, they're ethical, and they're societal. And number seven, we talk about jobs and whether demand is being rewritten. This week exposed a sharp contradiction in the AI jobs narrative. According to LinkedIn, software engineering remains the most in-demand job right now, despite repeated claims that coding is dead. Demand is high, but maybe the job itself is changing. Less manual coding, more systems design, and AI collaboration. At number eight is what we are saying. Are we in the disillusionment phase? One of the world's leading mathematicians, Joel David Hamkins, publicly criticized current AI systems used for mathematics. This was supposed to be one of those golden use cases. He described them as basically zero and garbage for serious mathematical work. If this were a colleague, he said, he would simply refuse to talk to that person again because of AI's tendency to confidently give wrong answers and resist correction. They lack the kind of disciplined reasoning required for real mathematical proof. And if that was not enough, MIT Sloan pushed back on one of the most hyped ideas in AI, autonomous agents. According to MIT Sloan, reliable production-grade AI agents will not be ready in 2026, with truly dependable systems still around five 
years away. AI is not ready to be your teammate. Why? Because AI makes too many mistakes. And then, according to IEEE Spectrum, after two years of steady improvement, AI coding models hit a quality plateau in 2025 and have recently shown signs of decline. Tasks that took five hours with AI are now often taking seven to eight hours or longer, leading some developers to revert to older LLM versions. This is not about demos. It's about real-world reliability breaking down. At number nine, we've got India, which is building a global AI model. This week, India's AI ecosystem was highlighted by the PM, who had a closed roundtable discussion with 12 leading AI companies. The major takeaways, startups and entrepreneurs are co-architects of the country's AI future. The country, meaning India, has immense capacity for both innovation and large-scale implementation. The focus in India should be on building ethical, inclusive, and globally competitive AI ecosystems. And this should all be aligned with the idea of made in India, but made for the world. This week in AI wasn't about one announcement. It was about direction, moonshots, new frontiers, geopolitics, backlash, jobs, and limits. These were the top nine things that happened in AI this week.